Well, hello everyone. This is uh, Chris back with the uh, Ancient Scholar. Uh, don't mind my uh, y equals uh, x squared uh, function and uh, rather poor drawing of a graph there. Uh, that is uh, something I'm working on a little different. Uh, but what I want to talk about today is uh, this little guy here. And these are actually some tracings of um, hemodynamic uh, waveforms that I've uh, uh, printed out. Uh, from one of the intensive care units uh, that I'm associated with. As you can see, I've removed all patient data uh, to include medical record numbers, uh, dates, and so on, so uh, there are no HIPAA issues uh, regarding uh, privacy and uh, patient confidentiality. Uh, so what I just wanted to show you here is, um, if you can see on the top here, uh, I obviously have an ECG here. You can see that there are uh, some T-wave inversion here, so, so obviously this is... Uh, some sort of underlying cardiac issue going on with this patient, uh, but what I want to show you here is uh, this this uh, continuous waveform strip here at the bottom, and as you can probably tell, I actually drew that in there. Uh, this is an arterial line. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in on this a little bit, and you can see what I have here is I have a, um, a basically a scale from zero to 150, and that's actually millimeters of mercury. So what I have here is uh, my arterial uh, waveform, and the lowest uh, part of it, of course, is, is, is going to be the, the diastole and then systole. And uh, as you can see, this is very characteristic of the kind of waveform that I talked about earlier, uh, where you may have some uh, aortic valve dysfunction, maybe this, this person's a little older, or maybe they have some uh, underlying issues, and you often will get just kind of a rounded waveform where you don't have a... a clearly identifiable dichrotic notch and you just kind of get this this rounded waveform uh, not uncommon to see in a lot of these waveforms uh, but anyway uh, so the lowest point point here would uh, be diastole with the highest point being systole so we're looking at about 75 for diastole and maybe 125 or so um, for systole and it'll actually say um, up top here uh, obviously, I've uh, erased uh, some of the information. Okay, so that's just an example of the art line. Down here, I have just another example of an art line, and I'm going to try to zoom in here. I don't know how the, good the quality will be. Probably not great, because I'm actually filming from my iPad. Um, but there's a little bump here, and that actually you know, looks uh, looks like it could be a dichrotic notch. Um, but again, for the most part, you know, I have a waveform where I just kind of have this rounded appearance um, and, and no well-defined dichrotic notch. Again, these are not taken in the sterile environment. These are real patients. Um, you can see this patient has a PVC here, and you can automatically tell that the PVC um, is not perfusing. It doesn't create the pressure that a normal um, beat would. And, of course, this is the uh, one of the concerns you get when you have lots of PVCs or several in a row, that's actually called ventricular tachycardia, is you don't have really good cardiac output with uh, some of these anomalous, um, these anomalies like PVCs. Okay, so moving on down here, now I actually have an example of a central line. Now again, um, whoever is monitoring this patient, um, they set their scale up kind of interesting. And if you see the scale here, it goes from 0 to 150. Um, and if a normal CVP is anywhere from 2 to 6 millimeters of mercury, obviously this is going to create a very, very small tracing. Uh, but again, remember when I said that your CVP really kind of looks like fine V-fib outside of the sterile environment, and, and you can definitely kind of appreciate that here. Now, what what I could do is I could, uh, what I'd probably want to do if I was flying this patient is I'd maybe make this 0 to 25 instead of 0 to 150. And if this was 0 to 25, obviously this would become a lot more pronounced. Uh, but again, you know, appreciating all of the, the, you know, the X and the Y and the D sense and the A sense of the, of the, the proper CVP waveform is, is going to be rather difficult even when I do um, adjust uh, my, my scaling factor here. Um, just because this isn't in a sterile environment, there's you know, movement and, and, and things going on, but you can definitely appreciate you know, the big difference between the central venous uh, pressure tracing and the arterial line pressure tracing. So hopefully, um, you guys that have never seen those before, hopefully that uh, helps cement uh, these concepts a little bit better, and hopefully that makes some sense. Okay, guys, we'll uh, see you soon with the pulmonary artery uh, videos coming up soon.
Take care. Bye-bye.